Folks, it's time for drama. It's time to subtweet. It's time to take some umbrage. In fact, roll that umbrage taking stinger. Taking umbrage. When I never. But it's alright, because like any noble pursuit, we're not punching down. We're not shifting any blame onto people that don't know any better. We're punching up at brand new artists who don't know any better. Oh no, I don't like where this is going. But I had a little figurine on my shelf back there for every time someone misinforms, misinterprets, or overvalues art style on the World Wide Web, I, I mean, the shelf would look like it does. Today, I'm particularly calling out some advice I've seen floating around about how to find and develop your art style. And while it might seem like I'm splitting hairs, I'm going to give you the principles of what to do instead. So what is the advice? Well, I've seen it presented a few different ways from a few different people, but basically it boils down to, in order to find your unique art style, first, make a compilation of art that you like, second, copy the features that you like the most, that can't be the end. Oh, step three, enjoy, you now have an art style. Now hold the ding dang cordless phone for a minute. So here's the thing about this advice. A lot of it is actually going in the right direction and useful. There are shades and reflections of things that I've even recommended in here, but there's like no less than three huge problems with this. It's derivative, it's far too reductive, and probably most importantly, it completely misses the point of what style is. So first of all, what is art style? Well, I think if you asked the average non-art person, they'd probably describe it as something like a category or something that reminds them of something else. When's the last time you saw someone call anything 3D or stylized Pixar style? And why was it today? But from a technical or artistic perspective, it doesn't really hold any weight. For one thing, a lot of times Pixar movies don't even look like other Pixar movies. And we know the reason for that. As technology has changed and time has gone on, new creative teams are behind the direction for different movies. If you ask the average artist what an art style is, they might break things down to a little bit more like subcategories or genres or even just visual signatures, colors, subject matter, or mediums that an artist highly favors. This is usually where new artists are trying to get their foot in the door. Right away, they want to have a visual trademark, the thing that identifies them and makes them unique, and they want that represented with something visual. Really though, what art style actually is, is all about problem solving. And what is the problem exactly? Well, the problem is that art is hard and that you're making something from nothing. Representing something or creating something new on a flat surface or an artificial context that resembles the real world or makes us have a reaction is difficult. So for example, drawing photorealistic, accurate hands from every angle and position in every single piece of art that we make is not only incredibly difficult and time consuming, it's probably not ideal or what we even want to do. If Ub Iwerks had to draw photorealistic hands on every frame of Mickey Mouse animations, he'd probably never finish one short in his lifetime. So we get simple gloved hands that act as simple, clear identifiers. Problem of hands is solved and Mickey doesn't become an eldritch horror. That's essentially what we mean by problem solving. It's why a lot of times character designers will compliment each other on the solution or way that they resolved something. Because by the very nature of visual development, you're trying to make something out of nothing in a way that makes sense. Frequent viewers of my videos will be able to finish this sentence before I can because I've said it so many times. Stylization is drawing something the wrong way intentionally. Up Iwerks was drawing Mickey's hands wrong. That's not how a mouse's paw or a human hand looks. Mike Mignola's Atlantis hands are wrong. There aren't that many hard angles in the human hand. Well, stylized designs are inherently breaking some kind of rule, and the best ones break the rules to give us something visually appealing. And what's that thing about breaking the rules? That you have to know them before you can break them. Both of these artists knew a decent amount about drawing hands, the construction of them, their motion, before they drew or created the stylized versions that are something of a signature for them. So what does this have to do with bad style advice? Well, too often the way that new artists want so badly to jump into having a signature style is both backwards and omitting a huge part of the process. It's like if you got a math test and as the answer for question one, you just wrote, you're going to like my performance on this test so much that you're going to give me an A and then just left the rest of the test blank, expecting the teacher to give you a 100%. The desire exists to succeed, but the effort to do so 
has been leapfrogged. What about this art style advice specifically, the one where you create a collage of your favorite artist's work in order to create somehow a new art style? Well, if all I did was copy Mike Mignola's hands, they don't become my hands just because the face looks like it was drawn by Nicholas Cole. There's plenty of truth to the statement that there's nothing new under the sun, but by copying the answers from someone else's test, you are by definition going to be derivative. And if the desire was to be Mr. Fresh Unique Art Style, all someone has to do is be familiar with who you're copying to know that it's derivative. But the math test analogy goes further. You know how teachers ask you to show your work, to show how you arrived at the answer? Well, because you copied the answers off of someone else's test, you don't know how you got there. By skipping the art fundamentals that allow you to have a solid understanding of the work and going directly to the way that someone else broke the rules intentionally, the work also just looks wrong. Some people might not notice, but those with a trained eye and other artists will notice. Like I said though, there's an element of this that's great advice. Studying the way that other artists make the work that they do is always good practice, and I've recommended it here dozens of times. This should only be done though alongside your own training and understanding of fundamentals, learning to make things, for lack of a better term, the right way. See, the thing is, even without this advice, most artists go through this process naturally. Their source of inspiration for starting to make things themselves is usually so singular that it's obvious what their inspiration was, and that's fine. But to really make things their own, they need to diversify and expand their sources of inspiration. You also need to realize the limits present when your influence, fuel, and inspiration all come from things that other people made. Art, games, movies, comics, all already made by someone else. If your only reason for making a video game was that I really like Pikmin, you know what the superior experience or game is going to be? Pikmin. Another huge piece of discourse surrounding art style is this overemphasis of making sure that all of your work is in one consistent style. Two things to think about with this. One, if you aim to get hired, studios actually value people who are able to communicate and learn new art styles. And two, if you are trying to make the art that you make now look like the work that you made two years ago, you're inherently stifling any kind of progress that you could be making. All in all, style is way overvalued. It's a means to an end for artistic communication and expression. The advice that I give is to instead find your artistic voice. Completely outside of the technical skill and techniques that people use to do that visual problem solving, the greater source for why something looks the way that it does comes down to what they are trying to say. They want to make something that looks scary, so it's going to look scary. Delightful and serene, it's going to be made that way. Understanding that deeply personal part of you and what it is that fuels you to make things is a much greater force for style. It's also something that can't be copied from someone else or faked. The exact reasons that you and I make things, the exact experiences we've been through, are completely unique. The quest to go on then doesn't become what kind of collage of other people's solutions do I want to cobble together into a golem of derivative thoughts. It simply becomes, what am I trying to say? And not just from a cerebral way, but the actual physical drawing or creating standpoint, you'll find that as you go through that process of trying to understand something the right way, not wanting to do something the right way, and then figuring out your own way to streamline, simplify, or distort something, is going to be so much more creatively fulfilling. And my biggest hope is that you can come across those moments yourself. Really, my point for making this video is hoping that you will come across those moments yourself because it's a great time for any artist. So this has been your inaugural Umbridge. Taking Umbridge. Well, I, never. I hope that you were able to keep up with that high level of drama and toxicity. My course Learn Character Design covers art fundamentals. It's a comprehensive character design curriculum. So drawing fundamentals, storytelling, design elements, all as it pertains to character design, you can get that at learncharacterdesign.com. It's over 18 hours of video learning. You can also get Vico's backpack at patreon.com slash bageldenizen. This is a, uh, a new original package of art delivered to your mailbox every month. This month looks like this. I'm at Bagel Denizen on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and TikTok. Thank you so much for watching, and have fun creating.